Right. Okay. So um, I was talking to Jim a couple of days ago at the Jenkins meetup, and he said he was keen for people to talk about their experience of using Jenkins. Um, and I'm very much a sort of I want to learn how to use Jenkins. I've uh, as I've come on to, I've done a tiny amount for my real work, uh, but most of what I'm doing is DBA. Um, but there was one particular project, which I know a number of the people here were at um, last week, um, called the Nomad CI project, Nomad Continuous Integration, which is a very interesting project. And I've been playing with that, and it's a really nice tool, putting aside all the cool technology behind it, it's a very nice tool for actually just learning and having, having a go at Jenkins. So I'm going to have a quick go over what I've done and how far I've got. Um, okay. So, a little bit about myself, uh, 20 years in the industry, mostly Oracle databases, some other databases, uh, one brief Amazon, um, uh, uh, Amazon automation project that was done in, in Jenkins, so that was quite fun, Amazon command line. Before I was a DBA, I spent as a software engineer, uh, did some mainframe work I mean, back in 1996, 97, moved on to VB SQL Server, then Java, Oracle, and the back of my education, so sort of, you know, maths and then software engineering, and then lots of Oracle certifications. Um, but what I really want to do is try and get away from just doing Oracle databases for the rest of my life, which is pretty hard because, um, you know, once you're an Oracle DBA, people want you to do Oracle. So, uh, I see actually a downward trend because you've, you've got your VA from Oxford and then went to Liverpool and then working for Oracle. It's like, what next? The gutter? Yeah. <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, the next slide I slipped in when I saw Jim had put one of his dog in. So I put, uh, I'm very cute on my cats. So a little more coding. But that's a cat? <laughs> that is a cat. <laughs> so Three Sphinx cats. Uh, actually, there's two and a half. So one of the cats is actually a half half breed. So, uh, but I slipped that in. Mm. Saw, saw Jim had uh, put dog photos in. I'd like to have a dog too. But I think with three cats in a two bedroom flat, that's about as much as I can cope with. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, yeah, you know, I met Jim a couple of a couple of months ago, and he was talking about Jamstam, and uh, you know, he also organised the meetup on on Tuesday to get certified. Uh, which is a really good challenge because you know makes it makes me. It's a real challenge. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I heard. Um, so I, I did expect it to be a, light, a little quite tough the exam. So I, I've got it scheduled for a month from now. Um, so I'm getting some really good hands-on experience, getting a flavour for coming to the meetup. Um, so thanks to Jim for organising all this. Um, one of the things in the documentation they say about preparing for the exam is to read Jenkins' definitive guide which is basically, I mean, I know J Jenkins is written in Java, which I have no problem with, but it's very much focused on sort of Maven and, you know, more Maven and, you know, then a pom.xml, which isn't terribly exciting to look at, particularly if you're not likely, I mean, historically, most J Jenkins problems have been around Maven, um, and even if they're not using the Maven uh, project, people are still doing freestyle projects in Maven, but you know, now people are starting to use Jenkins in very different ways, which is what I, you know, my experience of Jenkins is I was trying to automate something for Amazon, um, Amazon RDS. But um, last week there was a really good presentation uh, by a guy from uh, at the HashiCorp user group, and it's about using this resource management and schedule, a like scheduler called Nomad, and um, you know, you're doing that and you're using that to build Docker images, deploy uh, Jenkins, build up an application, build Docker, sl Docker slaves, uh, Jenkins slaves via Docker. So there's a really good, if I just take out full screen mode, um, there's a really, uh, this is one of the things that's really nice about this, pres about this, this, this project is it's so well documented. So this is the GitHub repository and this readme is excellent. So you can just literally work through it uh, and there's lots and lots of you know, good advice about it, about using it. You do need to use Vagrant. Um, and he explains the sort of infrastructure. Uh, and he goes, he's written a blog, a blog post. And back here, um, you know, he talked about it at the meetup last week with the HashiCorp one. I think he's also presenting, Evo's presenting, I, I saw he's presenting continuous delivery, I think, next week. Uh, but Bart 
recorded the, uh, the presentation and it's very clear and concise uh, from the HashiCorp one, so that's this YouTube presentation. So you can watch it, it's about 50 minutes. So this is, so the project's very well documented. And, okay. Um, yeah, at the heart of the project, from a Jenkins perspective, is there is this cloud plugin, which I've, which is explained in the YouTube video in about minutes 22 to 26. He, he talks about it, but you have to in Jenkins you have to put in all your Nomad details and. Um, oops. And so you can, when you're building your images, you can specify, when you're building your Docker images, you can specify how much CPU you <coughs> There are certain labels about nodes. Um, all this is explained much you know, very in, in the presentation. But I just want to focus on the Docker jobs and just getting a flavor for how Docker works. So uh, in, the, in the Docker, you know, in, in the, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, there are a number of, of jobs. So initially you do a build, then a deploy, then you build these, these services. Uh, there's an integration test part which I haven't got working yet, and then there's you know uh, winding it all down. So we'll, oh, there's a demo in a moment, so I'll cover these. Um, once you've got it running, um, so when you're building this up in your in your Vagrant project, you first do you set up the the Nomad I think it's Nomad or console registry. That's uh, that's the first step. That's done via Bash script. You then set up your uh, Jenkins master, which is again done, done by a bash script. You have your Selenium sort of test environment, again, that's a bash command. And after that, you're building things via Jenkins and Jenkins slaves. Um, so there aren't any Jenkins slaves in this, in this screenshot here, but hopefully in a moment I'll bring one up. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of what the project does. Uh, let's just uh, exit out of here. Uh, is that uh, okay? So um, here's the Jenkins uh, interface, uh, and um, and if we have a look at the command line, this is my uh, this is my project. If we just before I do this, if I cat the vagrant file, it does require quite a lot of memory. Um, so I did try this on a smaller laptop with two gig with two gigs of memory, and it didn't work terribly well. Um, so it, it's quite a lot of resources. Um, so if we just have a look at the moment, uh, the state of the machine. Um, right. So at the moment, uh, the all the non-Jenkins, all the non, all the bits which aren't automated by Jenkins are, are already running. Uh, so that's all covered in the blog in, in his in his GitHub readme. But you've got your registry, you've got your Selenium, and then you've got your Jenkins master. So what I want to do is go to Jenkins itself, and here you've got your jobs. So we're ready to do the build job. Okay, so and now it's deploying, it's got Jenkins slaves, and it's building the age servers. So if we have a look at the command line, So you've got, it's spun up a Jenkins slave to do the work. Uh, we're not seeing the app yet. So if we have a look at, uh, so it's doing the first of the apps. There's actually three applications here. And what's this actually building? Is it just a sample project or? It's just it's just a demonstration of how, how this all works, how you can use Nomad uh, and um, console and Docker to yeah. do uh, a test. Okay, so there's Nomad that's bringing up the Jenkins slaves. Um, well, it's scheduled via it's scheduled via Jenkins. But if we have a look at the job spec, um, so have a look at it. Yeah, so if you have a look here, um, probably we brought it up. So it it has to register it via console as far as I'm as far as, as far as I'm aware. Now I can't see it yet. Um, that's still the slave there. 
uh, the, no, sorry, that's the mic. Yeah. Um, right, okay, so that's the Slave Micro app. And um, so it's brought that up about a minute ago. So it's another Docker image which has been brought up uh, in this job. Now I haven't got to the bottom of how this all, all, all exactly works and it's a very complicated project and I'm not expecting to be using Nomad um, you know, in the near future so I don't want to go into too, too in depth. But it's very much more like the sort of, you know, my one experience was automating something around the Amazon cloud and, and an RDS, a simple RDS cloning uh, process which I was able to do through you know, the Amazon, uh, a bash script called the Amazon command line interface. So, which is you know, the sorts of things we'd like to have in the future. I'm not likely building a big Java project with a pom.xml, which was the problem I had with the Jen Jenkins Definitive Guide. Um, so, actually, what it's doing, I'm, um, I did actually, I watched the presentation, which is really, which is really good, um, from last week again last night, and it's, it's, it makes sense, but I can't explain it. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not at that level. It's uh, you know I can follow what he's saying, but it's you know it's it, you know he's, he's documented it well, um, and I recommend you you know I would recommend to go and see it if if, if and when you get a chance because I think he's going to do the talk over again. Right. So uh, they've all now um, they've now all, all, all been rebuilt. Um, so there's a deploy part which has got a parameter. You deploy it, deploy it, test. Um, okay. So here you can see the name service app, and the, and the third one was a Redis app. Um, so not, I'm not exactly sure why they've got these different naming conventions, but that's you know, deep in the bowels of his project. But quite a fun thing to play with to get familiar with the Jenkins UI or you know the configuration, um, you know, where is to find the, the plugin. So once you've yeah, so at the moment um, I think the deploy well, it looks like the deploy is finished. The, f the final part of his project is the integration, and that's failing for some reason. I haven't debugged it yet, um, but I find it quite satisfying to have got this far, and you know, to, to, uh, to have all these different services running. Uh, there was there's one slight gotcha in the scripts, um, which I had to contact him about, and it's to do with Docker client versus server, and there's something he didn't realise it was you know, he needs to fix that in his scripts. But it's in a very small plot too. Again, your name and for the for the pull request that you submit? Uh, not really, because he fixed it for me. <laughs> and I think, to be honest, what he did was he fudged the issue. Um, so, uh, I think it's, I can't remember which script it was. I think it's the, it's the Jenkins slave image. He, he, he hard coded a new version of, of, of Docker. So, and I think that was a sort of like, he hasn't fixed it permanently, uh, but that's a sort of nice, that was just like a temporary thing to get up and running. Through. But, uh, you know, if you want to learn about Docker and you're a newbie, I thought that was a nice exercise. Yeah, so you've got, I think, Docker, Jenkins, uh, what's it called, all that other stuff? Nomad, Nomad console. Nomad, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm hearing more and more about Nomad and console. It just seems like Ashicorp can put a foot wrong. They just keep coming up with these great tools. Well, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Vagrant. I've been using it all the time for, for the last couple of years. Um, you know, it just automates the, you know, the deployment of virtual servers and test environments. Uh, I, I'm hearing that people are using Vagrant in production. I'm thinking, I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm sure there is a use case. But for me personally, <laughs> for me personally, it's just a great tool to automate and deploy in my virtual environments and keep an eye, and keep a, you know, Keep control of them and then you know, just be able to destroy them and rebuild them again so easily. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so yeah, and uh, Chris did a press. Chris is here did a presentation on Packer, which I, you know, pretty interesting. 
I'm not sure I want to need I need to use Packer, but now I understand when you would use it. Certainly if I wanted to, to do something like build an AMI uh, for Amazon, that could be done through Packer quite nicely. And that would be that would be a good use case. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Cool.